Broadcasting live four days a week worldwide. From the sunny beaches of Southern California. This is ExtremeHealthRadio.com. This is quantum energy healer Chris Kaler. When I need to hear what's new in alternative health, I listen to Justin and Kate on Extreme Health Radio. Beautiful Wednesday morning. Uh, for time for another education about health, huh? Yeah, right. It's be fun. Oh, hold on. Let me turn my sound down here. My fault. <laughs> no, hold up. You got a little sound issue going oh on on your gosh. computer. I have my live chat up, and it's causing me a problem. There we go. I tell you, there's about 65 Ooh. different little buttons and levers and things you need to push. <laughs> right. you go live. <laughs> I'm okay over here now. <laughs> you sure you're good? Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I'm excited, and uh, it's my favorite month, July. July is your favorite month? Well, for summer. I don't know. It just seems like everything's just, you know, it's right before the 4th. It's festive. Weather's getting amazing. And yeah, we have some good guests lined up this month. It's just an exceptional month. I love it. I love it too. And we get to go on a little vacation this month. We do. In a couple weeks, we're up to uh, Lake Tahoe. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. No, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this show, I'm really excited to talk to Roland Thomas. We'll introduce him in just a moment. But this is uh, going to be a great show. We're going to be talking about... Microalgae, his book, Awakening the Genius Within, and some of his products, and that's just going to be really great. We're going to talk about how these microalgae affect the body and the energetics of the body and bioreactors and bacteria and all kinds of good stuff. So we'll introduce him in just a minute, but this is episode 274, is that right? Correct. 274, okay. And for reference, today is July 2nd, 2014, two days away from July 4th where all the fireworks go off. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be a lot of fun. And um, so today's Wednesday, July 2nd. And we broadcast live four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific if you'd like to join the show. And if you'd like to support the show, you can always purchase anything you buy on Amazon through our link, extremehealthradio.com slash Amazon. That helps to keep the show free. That helps keep it free for everybody else. And that's a great, 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 easy way to support us. So we appreciate all you guys that do that. Yeah, it's just really a blessing. So if you'd like to join us again, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific is when we are live. You can join the party, join the chat room. And today we have Roland Thomas. This is going to be a lot of fun. PhD, he works with bioage.com is his website. And he has a monthly nutrition and e-newsletter. He's author of the books called The Magic of Bioalgae Concentrates, as well as Awaken the Genius Within. And he's been into holistic health and enthusiastic about this subject since he was 14 years old oh when he got gosh. introduced to yoga, vegetarianism. And since then, he studied uh, natural medicine, energy, nutritional medicines, kundalini yoga, wow. qigong, and tai chi. And he received his Bachelor of Science and Business from the University of Montreal and received his doctorate in naturopathy from Trinity College and as a PhD. My gosh. So he may know what hasn't he done? I know, right? <laughs> so let's suffice it to say he knows a little bit more than all of us probably. Listening. I Combined. would think. <laughs> so I want to thank you, Roland, for being on the show today. I really appreciate this. Yeah, you're scaring me here. <laughs> <laughs> you're setting me up. <laughs> I, I, then you know the more you know. You've heard the expression: the more you know, the less you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right. Yeah, that is absolutely very, very true. <laughs> Isn't that just, true? Yeah. Like, the more you learn, the more everything breaks, you know, apart. Mm. Yeah, uh, certainly in the domain of uh, wellness or health and, and medicine, <laughs> which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it has all gone by the side. Uh, yeah, this is something. That anyway, can- so yeah, I've done a lot, Kate, but uh, I was uh, how I ended up in a yoga camp at 14 was not of my own volition. Uh, what happened is I was going out with this uh, high school sweetheart and. Mm. Uh, Summertime, the mom was going for a retreat in uh, the first yoga school in Canada, in Valmorin, Quebec. And uh, she didn't want to leave us alone at the house, so she paid <laughs> my stay at the yoga camp. Oh, my gosh. You see? Wise woman. 
<laughs> right. I know a woman. So I ended up at the feet of a master there, uh, Yogi Shivananda, I believe, and um, listening to him, uh, lecturing every day and doing yoga under his instructions every morning. A vegetarian diet, which I, you know, I had never heard of these things before, mm. except that in books in some some cartoon. So that was a, a bath, if you wish, uh, er, too early, too premature, I should say, because I ended up being a hippie after that. Uh-oh. Did you? Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> which uh, I, I'm people. not at all uh, regret or anything like that. It was a very positive experience and a great learning, tremendous travels and meeting extraordinary weird people yeah really before i came back to some uh, finishing my studies and, and lined up you know shape up or ship shape up to uh, societal uh, norms uh-huh. regrettably a little too much for a while until i rebelled again and and studied more and more uh the holistic perspective about health rather than a conventional you know um sci- with in quotes, scientific, uh, you know, biology, chemistry, all that, wow. all that stuff, which I've learned many times over, and then uh, I've completely unlearned, if you wish, or, or learned not to need that at all. Anyhow, uh, sorry about that. I just went on a <laughs> no, no, we love it. On a what side a, note here, what an amazing I, thing. I just want to to diffuse all this education, you know, and and I'm just. It's common sense, you know, eventually that comes out. And that's what we're, we should all be looking for eventually. And we're all scientists. I want, I want to make that very, very clear. This uh, word science and scientists that's used, that's thrown at us. You know, scientists have said this and that. Well, uh, the goal in life is to become a scientist of our own health and wellness. Each and every one of us should take that as the ultimate uh, hobby and it's, a, it's until we pass, it's a, the it's a most wonderful uh, adventure. Mm-hmm. Et voila. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and what a blessing for you to be a part of something like that starting at the age of 14. I mean, that, a lot of times people don't get involved in health and nutrition until later on. That's very true. <clears throat> That's very true. It was, and not that I got into it at all until quite later. But then I had two sisters that were granola, and they worked in a health food store and vitamins, and I started eating uh, soybeans, you know, and, and having indigestion. <laughs> I would cook them, and, you know, because they were hot back in the 60s. It was like the, the new protein. Right. Well, unbeknownst to me that you shouldn't eat soy <laughs> right. that, that way anyway. Oh. oh, my goodness. Wow. And so uh, did you take a... You said you didn't get really into all this stuff until a little bit later on. Did you take sort of a hiatus in your early 20s and kind of do your own thing and then come well, back to it? Yeah, you know, I studied science and I studied, uh, you know, all this biology. And, and, but I, I did touch the endocrine system as part of a study uh, about drug abuse, mm-hmm. part of one of my, bach- my bachelor's degree. Because I had come out of being a hippie and had touched on that a little bit, and so had many members of my family and friends, and I really wanted to get to the bottom of that. So I studied uh, scientifically uh, the history of use of drugs mm-hmm. since time immemorial, and and I ended up uh, writing my thesis on coffee. <laughs> really? On, you know, because it's just another form of a, a, a kind of a, an addiction. <clears throat> rather than choosing a topic like cocaine or something like that. Right, right. And I learned a lot because uh, I, I was able to study the relationship of, uh, of nutrients or food or energy to the brain, to the endocrine system and our addictive reactions and things like that. That got me more and more curious and, uh, and so forth. Uh, but yes, I came back after that and studied uh, advanced nutrition and eventually I got a MD degree or a naturopath degree and pursued that to quantum nutrition uh, and um, I, I don't know that the word PhD means much. Frankly, uh, all of these studies, uh, you end up using this information to inform others, right? We are a mirror, we reflect what we know mm-hmm. and uh, 
most of the time we don't know much and uh, mm. eventually uh, we share what we've learned. I love it. Quantum nutrition, that's an interesting concept. Uh, the energetics, yeah, a lot of people I don't... Cho I chose my thesis at IQUIM, uh, International Quantum University of Integrated Medicine. Uh -huh. And there I studied with uh, Amit Goswami, who is a PhD in quantum physics and uh -huh. a teacher at uh, one of the renowned uh, universities mm -hmm. in America. But he's also a yogi and a spiritual uh, expert, if you wish, in, in, in understanding uh, from an Eastern perspective. His wife is a well-known uh, yoga master. Mm -hmm. And so he has absolutely integrated the most advanced science about energy and about the, how the, the universe is, is, is formed, how it, what it's made of, as above, as below, as below, as above, and the fact that we are but a cloud of communication, communicating energy. You know, when you get into that, uh, <clears throat> after having studied... Uh, in the most closely nutrition in molecules and what is the purpose of eating and what does it do in our body and then, then you go into you go underneath all this facade this material gross material molecules actually and even atoms mm -hmm. and subatomic particles are gross when you study quantum reality mm -hmm. and so I call I called my thesis and my paper quantum nutrition mm. and, and in it I really break down uh, nutrition or food as a form of fuel from which we gather uh, we get we obtain energy it's an exchange it's a marriage with mother earth with the father son if you wish it's all about photosynthesis and and the atomic uh, energy from the trace elements from minerals and what our body, our genius within does with that is inexplicable, indescribable, and we could never write a book. We will never be able to get to the bottom of it mm -hmm. because the, the more we break down how our body or cells behave, the more, you know, the more we advance in our ability to see uh, smaller micros microscopically, mm -hmm. the more it runs away from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, someone said in the 70s, I forget his name, he was a lecturer. He said that the more we chase the macro universe, the more it will run away from us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, literally, you can say the same thing about the micro universe, the micro. You know, we, we will never end going smaller and smaller and smaller. It's interesting that it's really all about energy and frequency, isn't it? When you get down to that level, it's quite fascinating. Correct. And, and, and frankly, these are just two words again, you know? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we could break those two words. What, what is energy? <laughs> right. What is frequency? And then we end up with the intellectual discussion instead of just breathing. Mm -hmm. Instead of being with it, yeah. Hmm. Um, interesting. All right. So okay, I know we're going on tangents. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is great. So you wrote a book, um, a couple of different books, "The Magic of uh, Bioalgae Concentrates," as well as "Awakening the Genius Within." Uh, when did you write those two books? Uh, after I met the Russian scientist Dr. Michael Kiriak uh -huh. in uh, 1998, uh, I was very inspired. He's a he's a real science scientist, PhD in cellular nutrition that he had obtained at the, at the Academy of Science uh, of the former uh, Soviet Union mm. in Moldova, at the time a, a state of Russia, of the former Soviet Union. And he dedicated, uh, well, he was propulsed in animal research, but he had landed on the uh, awareness about chlorella back in 1970, which the Japanese had been studying for quite a while and had come up with interesting research and clinical evidence of using chlorella in animal feed or, or for human for, for fighting, slowing down the progress of cancer, increasing killer cells. And there was lots of papers, quite not even yet in America, by the way, mm -hmm. in 1970. But he, uh, he was blessed to have, have seen that in his study and he latched on to that and uh, kept digging in. And when he came out of, uh, of his uh, degree, of his bachelor's degree initially, he was invited to pursue his studies with, uh, he, he had studied with many small groups of animals in, in, in the university. 
but he was invited to continue his studies in, in livestock around uh, this area where he lived, which was uh, uh, which had a lot of productivity issue in the livestock industry and epidemic of cancer, because uh, Russia had begun to gather all the small farms onto these gigantic farms, mm-hmm. and so there was disease, you know, hygiene issues and low productivity, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. So um, he was blessed with some budget. And, and some people to assist him, and it grew, and, and, and eventually, I'm going to wrap it up, in a matter of the first eight years, they were able to look at hundreds of different algae, uh, even thousands of a few variants, and landed up on uh, selecting a few of them and blended them together, uh, rather than working with just one, let's say, spirulina or chlorella. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, they called those uh, bioalgae concentrate, which was the generic term. Uh, bio meaning they were left uh, organic, as close to organic as possible, mm-hmm. which was one of the learning to not, uh, I was going to say F around with, with nature, <laughs> <laughs> to not play around with nature was one of the big lessons from a PhD in science. Wow. You know, so he, he learned that because in Russia there was no boundaries, you know, between natural and chemical and organic. There was no laws that said, no FDA, if you wish. Okay. They could study Kyrian photography, whatever they could, uh-huh. as long as you could advance knowledge or findings. And so um, uh, bio means organic. And algae means algae, and concentrate means that they had learned to concentrate them even more than when they're grown, when they're left alone on a lazy lake or lagoon uh, or in the ocean where there's no real, you know, uh, potential for perfection. Mind you, nature is perfect. Mm -hmm. But what I mean by that is they were able to control the environment of the growth of the plant in meaning the temperature, the exposure to light, the duration of the exposure, the elimination of pollution from the growth, from the basin, from the artificial bioreactor, if you wish, mm-hmm. and uh, use uh, chosen, eventually they learned to choose the most uh, efficient soil. In this case, it's a kind of a soup, water, algae grow in very specific pH and various trace uh, mineral have to be present sodium and in perfect balance, you know, for algae to bloom, to explode alive. Mm. And so they had learned to, instead of using local water, which was very poor in Moldova, especially after Chernobyl, Mm -hmm. there was some pollution, they moved uh, their research facility, one of their research facility to Siberia, northern Siberia, on the peninsula of Kanchatka, which is the most active a volcanic region on Earth. As we speak, there are 40 active volcanoes. And they use there, on the side of this volcano, geyser uh, thermal spring Mm -hmm. at 100 and some degrees Fahrenheit uh, to feed their bioreactor, already warm, with over 114 known trace elements present. So absolutely organic setting, no fertilizer needed. And they covered the facility uh, and just mimicked turbulence. And they provided light, uh, controlled light, and thus were able to concentrate by stressing the plant with more light than in nature and 24-7. And so they they got uh, more out of the algae. Uh, One example I can give you to make it simple. Uh, Let's say Dunaliella is a brown-red algae, Mm -hmm. quite popular nowadays. Dunaliella, or you could take, uh, well, I don't want to get into astaxanthin or hematococcus. We're going to lose some of our audience here. Mm -hmm. Or you could take spirulina and do somewhat something similar. But the reason for using Dunaliella to stress it was to obtain more redness out of the plant. So that, uh, for example, a tomato becomes red with exposure to light. It's a way of defending itself. It it grows more lycopene, for example, and other carotenoids which are antioxidative, if you wish. And so by stressing the plant, that Dunaliella shifted from a naturally occurring 12% carotenoid content, mixed carotenoid content, Uh 
which is really what we're looking for in health and wellness and energy, to a 25-27% content. Wow, that's quite, a, that's quite a jump. Extraordinary. And yeah. a shift from, if you wish, the protein content of the plant to more of a carotenoid content. And the plant becomes more red than brown. And so that's the kind of science and technology that Dr. Kiriak introduced me to. And uh, that, that got me going. That's I mean, I was semi-retired then. I was, uh, I was living in Colorado and I was going to move back to Canada. That's how we met. Um, my wife's brother introduced us. So he asked me to help him promote the product in the U.S. Wow. Well, this I is- jumped on it. I jumped on it. And uh, I was so fascinated. And I wrote the book because I was telling the story like I'm telling you now for hours and hours. <laughs> and I would lose my voice and I was so passionate. And I just can't stop when I start. I and so it. I wrote the book, and I, would, I started, uh, I've given over 250,000 books since, uh, free, because that's the story, you know. Aww. Wow, this is amazing. And people can get that on uh, bioage.com if people are interested in that. We'll share a link to that in the chat room as well. And um, just fascinating stuff. And when we get back from the break, I want to talk more about uh, this whole Chernobyl thing mm. and how microalgae affects different, I should say affects, because we can't say it will cure anything, but I want <laughs> right. to say affects the body in relation to specific diseases and things like That's that. That's a great way to put that. Yeah, it affects the body. We'll say mm. that, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a really, really great show. If you want to get that ebook, I believe it's available on bioage.com. We'll ask Dr. Thomas about that after the break and this is episode 274 and we broadcast live four days a week monday wednesday thursday and friday and we'll be right back right after this break i wanted to tell you about this really powerful and unique product called the q laser did you know there's over 2500 peer-reviewed clinical research studies showing the benefits of low-level laser therapy on the body we had dr larry lytle on episode 165 talking all about it dr lytle what is the Q laser? The Q laser is a light delivering device, handheld, rechargeable, that is for lay people and professionals that works at the cell level of the body to restore energy. Since the body is all composed of cells and the cells are composed of atoms, it's good for any and everything in the body. It is especially beneficial for injuries. It will reduce swelling and inflammation before your eyes. Literally, you can have a sprained ankle and fly the laser. and Within 30 minutes, you can see that the swelling in the ankle has been reduced. Since all disease is inflammatory, you can assume that the same process is working if you have some type of intestinal problem. We have pictures of using a light, a heat instrument to diagnose the intestinal inflammation. We can show that that intestinal inflammation is pretty much gone within three minutes using the Q1000 laser. It's the number one tool in your medicine cabinet. I have a saying, never leave home without your laser. I have had three serious burns, and each time I had my laser with me, I applied the laser immediately after I had the burn. I never even blistered. Kate and I don't want to be without ours. We've worked out a special deal with Dr. Lytle for all of our listeners. If you'd like to learn more about how the Q laser can dramatically improve your health, go to extremehealthradio.com slash laser. If you are currently using any hair care products that contain dyes or colorings, these things can be carcinogenic. You see, anything we put on our skin, even in the shower, gets into our bloodstream and causes a toxic overload to our organs over time. That's why we only recommend Morocco Method hair care products because they're 100% chemical free, 100% organic, raw, vegan, and even wild crafted and picked according to the lunar cycles. Listen to what our guest Anthony Morocco says about foaming agents in the shampoos. Well, number one with hair care is the sodium lauryl sulfate, which is a foaming agent, which is really carcinogenic and it's very, very toxic. So that's number one. And so they're so afraid of it. The industry has made 38 different names for it. They've created kokamai, they've created coconut, they've created palm oil. But anything that foams is sodium lauryl sulfate. So I would say that you really need to read your ingredient lists. And if you cannot pronounce the word, it's made in a laboratory. So would even organic hair care products that foam, would those be damaging as well? 
Yes, organic really today is not what it used to be. So it's just the word. It really, to me, is not reality. If you want a real product, you want to look at wild craft. As a former hairstylist, I love Anthony's products. If you'd like to have truly healthy and luxurious hair, no matter what your texture, go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash MM for Morocco Method or see it in our store. Again, that's extremehealthradio.com slash MM to learn even more. shows all the time on extreme health radio opening minds and transforming lives worldwide join our community today sign up to our email list and instantly get our free gift to you along with loads of inspirational content and cutting edge tips to help change your life at extremehealthradio.com slash subscribe Okay, I'm going with Tallahatchie roll over me. Yeah, you know, when you listen a little bit more, it sounds the closest to anything I've ever heard. It's a Tallahatchie roll over me. Yeah, he's got the he's got the southern thing going. It's kind of hard to understand. <laughs> I love this song though. I know it's great, isn't it? Uh huh. We're having an awesome time here with Dr. Roland Thomas from BioAge.com, and we're talking about microalgae and all kinds of inf- really in- interesting information about how he developed the product. Really, really good stuff, and I think it's um, going to really, really impact your health. And so we're going to talk more about um, how he developed the product and his book, Awakening the Genius Within, and how the microalgae affects the brain and all that stuff. So Mm. if you guys have any questions, though, about the laser or the Morocco method that we just ran the ads for, please let me know. If you have any questions, Kate is really good with answering (laughs) With answering them, sure. (laughs) I'll try uh, my best. That's right. So this is episode 274, we broadcast four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific if you'd like to join the show. And Roland Thomas, we're back with you here now, and it's really fascinating stuff. Was I correct before the break that people can get that book that we talked about right on your website, bioage.com? Yes, absolutely. You can download or read it online or download the electronic version. Oh, great. <clears throat> or even um, if you request it by email or call us, and don't forget to mention Justin, the, the, that is where you heard about us, we'll send you a free copy of the book, and there's a, a DVD that shows uh, the history of this research in Russia, old black and white movies of bioreactor, Dr. Karyak, the real deal, you know. It's not just like another multi-level goji berry from the jungle. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, goji berry are wonderful, but, you know, uh, this, uh, the science and the research done around this concept of bioalgae concentrate is extraordinary. I don't know that any other natural product, and frankly, pharmaceutical, has ever been subjected to such uh, advanced form of non-placebo research and non-capitalistic backed research. Uh Uh, The research that Dr. Kiriak uh, did, uh, eventually, there were more than 1.5 million animals involved. Wow. There was more than 20 species of animal involved. Most of them mammals, yeah, you Uh know what I mean? If they were all, uh, I don't know, birds, well, birds or mammals, uh-huh. <laughs> or, 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 you know, insect, I would say, well, I'm, I ain't no insect, but they were all mammals, and uh, uh, there were thousands of different, if you wish, uh, groups and tests and clinical and comparative tests, uh, starting with the Pavlov, uh, of course, formal Pavlov concept of, of research. Mm-hmm. This was an academic project. Uh, sponsored by the Academy of Science and eventually by the um, in, um, the Ministry of Nutrition and Agriculture in the former Soviet Union. This was a very, very large project. And um, I mentioned that uh, in trying to impress people because the results matter here. What was uh, learned and discovered was that the consuming of this food on a regular basis as part of the diet of the, these various animals led to undeniable evidence that it made a difference in their life, a significant, uh, an extraordinary difference in preventing 
tumors and new cancers, particularly much easier than to deal with large tumors, right, already engaged. Mm -hmm. Prevention of cancer was proven after eight years. This is when they entered the most advanced phase. At one point, there was a one million poultry farm used in, in which the, the housing, the, they were housed in 75,000 uh, animal housing, if you wish. So they were able to compare this uh, 75,000 animal taking this blend and, and the other 75,000 not. Mm-hmm. And so there's no placebo. You know, you don't have time to give love to every animal mm-hmm. and, and manipulate them. And the animals don't know and they don't lie. And what was proven was the mortality rate of new chicks dropped by 80% at birth. You lose uh, 10% of new chicks in, in any, any uh, poultry industry. Okay. Instead, you lost less than two. Fertility rate, uh, uh, spermatozoid count increased by 400%. And spermatozoid uh, speed, if you wish, or motility or energy by 400%. Wow. Litters double. Uh, instance of twins in, in uh, horses and cows and, and sheep and so forth. Uh, incredible reduction in endocrine issues with small calf. Augmentation of number of eggs per year by 50. Imagine on a million chickens, 50 more eggs. Nice. Yeah. That, that, that's that, that's a, an industry. Right. And by the way, having a, a million chicken on one farm, you would never consider that. This is more chicken than there is in, in, in Quebec. That's in the cool. state of Quebec. <laughs> yeah. It's suicidal because they were dealing with the epidemic of Marek, a cancer that decimates. Mm-hmm. Yet they were doing it without the use of antibiotics as part of the research. So all they were doing was giving them this out? This new food. They didn't change the diet. They did not expose them to light. While before they were giving them supplements such as vitamin D because chicken need a little bit of vitamin D mm-hmm. and many other minerals. They stop all that. They replace it with this food and their general feed and voila, the results. I could go on with hundreds of samples of results. Let me give you like a quick one. Yeah. Cows and chicken, they're both good example. Both in this uh, abnormal production environment will, after half-life, will not be able to lay eggs or lactate anymore because they, uh, first of all, they're abused, they're fed with, you know, overfed and so forth. What happens is they, they both suffer from osteoporosis, their structure breaks down, and they're uh, sent out for meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing, because they suffer from loss of, of calcium to the eggshell or to the milk, Constantly, constantly giving milk every day or laying eggs is not normal. And they have a poor diet. Mm-hmm. While when consuming this product, there was no sign of osteoporosis. The structure remained and they were able to, for example, chicken lay eggs 24 months instead of 14 or 16 months, which is their normal, uh, more than normal life cycle. And in cows, another five years with five new calf. So imagine the productivity. We're talking about doubling the productivity. Productivity, And in cows, let me give you a sense of uh, what, we, what we mean by energy mm-hmm. and not medicine. Consuming one gram per day, which is three small capsules, uh, if you were to look at it today, which fits in the, you know, the center of the palm of your hand. Mm-hmm. It's basically a lick. Uh, fi- uh, 1,800 pound cow would stop having osteoporosis, give 5,000 more grams of milk daily, that's several gallons more milk daily, and consume 5,000 grams less protein feed that they're given to, you know, to augment their weight. Being able to reduce 5,000 grams of the feed, give 5,000 more grams of milk, have no osteoporosis, and the milk uh, quality increased by about 12% in terms of protein and fat, which are two critical factors. And there was reduction to below uh, any kind of signs of trouble of the somatic cell count or leukemic cell presence in the, in the, cell, in the, in the milk, wow. which means no more leukemia hmm. or anemia. Wow, is it safe to say that um, the absorption in the human body would be even better uh, than in an animal body as well? 
So uh, before we, uh, before I answer that, uh, and um, well, it's safe to say no because humans are a lot more screwed up than cows uh-huh. because of our stress, because of our diet and uh, <clears throat> our rhythm of life, uh, and our digestive system is not as efficient as that, as that of a ruminant, mm-hmm. as that of a cow. We don't have three pre-stomach, and we cannot. What cows can do with grass is for, for, formidable <clears throat> in terms of eating. Uh, uh, certain grass that we could not eat because we don't have the proper digestive enzymes and so forth. Mm-hmm. So they really have a factory, if, you know, to to bring this, refine their food, filter it, and bring it to the blood, and then this, the rest is, of course, distribution through the blood system. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not as efficient as cow, uh, but. Uh, before you had asked or you had mentioned that how it affects or affects human health, mm-hmm. well, that's a very good topic. And uh, I want to bring it up because that's the only way to explain how such a small capsule can impact all of these species, including human, by the way. There was some eventually research with human, and we have now been promoting this product with human for 20 years in America. 20 years. Wow. Uh, but uh, uh, rather than look at this food as a medicine or it affecting uh, the consumer, let's look at it as instead of form of uh, extremely efficient fuel. And the human body with fuel get, uh, develops and uh, fabricates energy. And with energy, then the human cells, of which we have 100 trillion, will do the work. Uh, such as repair, growth, um, splitting, right? We, we, we make new cells all the time, and we cleanse, we eliminate debris, uh, we uh, digest, we create hormone, we fabricate 100,000 types of proteins and enzymes to do what our body has to do. We pump muscle, we pump the heart. It's not the food that does that. It's the cells of the body, all that the cells of the body ask for, and let's remember that, is give me some food so I can have energy to do my work. It's not give me some medicine so I can cure myself. <laughs> That's the medical model. I mean, you, Kate, you look in fairly good health, and so do you, Justin. And, and if you would see me, I'm 65, and I run marathon, and I'm just like endless energy. Wow. I have... And I grew, uh, on, before I knew it, I had never heard of, uh, of, of food as medicine. I found that out after my hippie period. <laughs> and so I was eating food just, I didn't know why, for energy or something. But that's exactly what it was. We, out of food, we get energy, which is the, mostly the sugar, which we get from the fat, from the sugar, of various kinds of, uh, you know, from pasta or pure sugar or whatever, uh-huh. and even protein. We get energy from that, but we also get, uh, raw material to grow like fats to grow cell membrane and tissues and so forth mm-hmm. and certain minerals to, to facilitate all that including calcium to grow our bones and our teeth or, or stuff like that so we have raw material to grow or, or rebuild because we regenerate constantly mm-hmm. billions and billions of cells every day and energy there is no medicine in food we we didn't we didn't grow with medicine right we grew with food oh, right so it's overrated this medical model and let thy food be thy medicine i say let thy food be thy fuel and let thy cell be thy medicine hippocrates would be agreeing with me today because he it was a, it was ahead of his time when he said let thy food be thy medicine nobody listened as you know right right, right. none of the physician uh, have listened to him whatsoever we would be, be way better off if they had but today we have entered the age of energy uh, it, it's no longer the age of medicine medicine is passé that means it's past it's it's mm-hmm. it doesn't work does it work does food as medicine work the four or five most critical cause of death in America, a leading cause of death, which are cancer, cardiovascular death, uh, and a few others up there, are all caused, by, the leading preventable cause of these death, of these killer disease, is food, according to the National Institute of Health, after smoke, after, sick, after wow. smoke. So, uh, come on. Hmm. It's a romantic idea that you can heal yourself with food. 
No, you can stop the madness of, of uh, making yourself sick by changing your diet, by eating proper food, by eating regularly, not too much, but the right kind of food, energy yielding food, and food that uh, leaves less debris in your body, if you wish. So efficiency is the mother of invention. And absorption. So the yeah. microalgae, it, it gives, it delivers energy to the cells more? Is that kind of what's going on? So, so the cells very, can... very good question. And I, I want to explain why I wrote a book, Awakening the Genius Within. Why did, do I call it that? Yeah. My first, the first title of the book was The Magic of Bioalgae Concentrate. Ah, and Dr. Okay. Kiriak or and I uh, brainstorm around it, and I said, eventually, I said, it's not the food that's the magic. It's the body. It's the geniuses within. It's the cells that are magicians, that are miraculously extraordinarily. You know, one cell of, of your body, of our body, is more complex than the city of Los Angeles, tenfold. And, and supplementing itself with myriads and hundreds of thousands of, of chemical interchange constantly day, every day and exchanging with outside and, and signaling with the brain through various, uh, the, the, small, the, mo the small hormone system is the cellular hormone system, which talks with, uh, with the conductor, uh -huh. with mama, the mama hypothalamus of the brain, if you wish. So awakening the genius within is to deliver energy at the hypothalamus, at the conductor of this philharmonic orchestra that is uh, our glands, our lymphatic system, our organs, and, and ultimately... 100 trillion cells of our body is what makes up all of these tissues and organs. There is no such thing as a liver. It's, it's a medical ID. It's an ancient 1600, you know, uh, century ID that we, are, we have guts and stuff like that. You mean we're more holographic kind of thing? Well, we're at least atomic being, uh -huh. you know, molecular being, right? The, the, the closest to a me mechanical model that Newton would be happy for me to say that would be, you know, how molecules behave. They interchange, they, they have receptors, and they connect with one another. It's really building block. But that's, that's still a very Newtonian model. It's a very rudimentary building block. It's like a domino, domino, domino or something like that. So when you go below the molecule, you end up with the atom. And the atom is, as you know, is an untouchable affair. It's, uh, we say there's a nucleus and there's n electrons and all that, but the reality of the atoms as we know it is all of these electrons and protons and so forth circulate in and out of the space of, of that same atom across the universe at the speed of light, hmm. interchanging constantly. So we're there, and I know we're going far away from food here, and then... <laughs> Underneath that resides subatomic reality, which we have no clue. Uh, the scientists, in quote, currently uh, the latest term that they've used, uh, sometimes one of them that came out uh, a decade ago was uh, what is it, frozen energy or something, <laughs> right? <laughs> For lack of a better term. And that right. the space between these subatomic particles is as grand as the space between our galaxy. And, and yet we cannot see in between there yet because our microscope are not able yet. But eventually we'll start seeing, you know, uh, smaller things and then we'll look into those and it will, it's infinite. Hence the term infinity. From a big or small, Anyway, we're, we're going really into quantum here. I love it. Actually, I've got to take a little I like. break. Uh, I, do want, I do want people to understand that why such a small capsule can cause such an effect. So let me um, reiterate that. The reason for the efficiency of this capsule is that it has over 15,000 uh, microscopic nutrients. All the amino acids that you want, the uh, vitamins, the um, protein, the t all known trace elements, uh, a myriad of phytonutrients, known and unknown, and, of, of course, the carotenoid, and particularly astaxanthin, beta-carotene, lutein, lycopene, and uh, alpha-carotene. Those are the most uh, efficient known, the most, the gross carotenoid that we know amongst a thousand different carotenoids that we have a chance to consume every day. What these carotenoids, I have learned, 
are good for, as opposed to what the popular understanding of them is, is for energy transfer rather than as antioxidant, like beta carotene and so forth is known as an antioxidant. Uh, this is a minimal uh, virtue of that carotenoid. What carotenoids serve along with chlorophyll, if you study energy transfer and the energy funnel, and you can look it up on Google, mm -hmm. you'll find that to facilitate bringing the sugars and the proteins and the fats to the mitochondria within the cell, the mitochondria is our engine, just like there's a combustion engine in a car. This is where we make energy and we store it and we use it. For example, the heart muscle um, has cells that have over 5,000 mitochondria per cell. As do our brain cells, they have over 5,000 mitochondria. Why? Because the mitochondria is the, is the fabrication of energy and the brain needs a lot of energy and so does the heart, for example. Mm -hmm. And so the chlorophyll, you've all heard the expression that chlorophyll is a very important factor in photosynthesis. Well, it's also known as the shepherd of light. It's a, it's a nickname because it's a critical component when these sugars, fats, and proteins come to traverse the, the membrane of the cell within the cell of the mitochondria uh, to facilitate uh, the Krebs cycle to mm -hmm. fabricate ATP energy. It's all about the, on the physical plane. That's how our cell fuel themselves. <clears throat> from a from a gross energy, from a this kind of energy, which is the light, the photosynthetic energy. Let never forget, also, and I bring this as a side, that the strong energy of the universe of our body is the atomic energy of all the trace elements in our body. Everything ultimately is atoms, and we are a frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Buzzing, humming, and what we want to do is hum coming at the right frequency. So back to the carotenoid, they are 100% involved from chlorophyll A and then various carotenoid and then chlorophyll B. And, and it's a little complicated, but it's a tr energy transfer. So it facilitates the Krebs cycle from manufacturing energy from the sugar proteins and fat. Long story, but the bioallergic concentrates through the research were eventually built to have a lot more carotenoid than protein or other stuff because it was understood that it, the name of the game is energy transfer. So when you consume one capsule, which is one third of a gram, within 15 minutes, it is, there is no bioavailability issue. It's 99.99% .99 dissolved in your blood and a macroscopic le level because there is no bulk or fiber to waste time with. It's mm -hmm. pure organic, naturally occurring 15,000 nutrients. Most of it are protein, as are algae, mm -hmm. but a large proportion is, are these carotenoid and chlorophyll. So that, that one third of a gram of microscopic food is distributed in 250 miles of blood vessel in your body in 50 milliseconds once it enters and it's liberated by the liver. It, it just travels your body. And there, with oxygen transported by red blood cell, is allowed to be diffused all the way to the end of your various parts of your body, but also reaches the brain extremely efficiently. That is fascinating. Uh, crossing, take... you know, you've heard the expression, the blood-brain barrier, which is a popular term. But in essence, what it means is at some point, uh, there are such small capillaries feeding the brain that uh, gross particles cannot, are not tolerated to cross these membranes because the cells that make up the arterial walls are uh, specialized at uh, opening or not their doors, if you wish. They're, they're, that's their specific role. They're, it's called the blood-brain barrier. They're, let's say the blood-retinal uh, barrier. It's a different thing. What happens when you get to the retina or the certain organs of the brain like the pineal, the pituitary, or the hypothalamus, which is the genius within. The hypothalamus is the conductor, just like if you, our body was a, a million-member philharmonic orchestra. You need a conductor, mm -hmm. and that's the feedback with the, the body is the hypothalamus. At some point, there's no more blood vessel. 
what we're talking about is diffusion. From pressure, osmosis pressure, pure small nutrients that are in a molecular shape and, and really smallness that the body can, can deal with are diffused through pressure through the retina or through the hypothalamus. And that is the reason for the efficiency of this bioalgae concentrate, is that a spirulina is very efficient, but it doesn't have enough carotenoid to push it as, re- as efficiently. But also, it's rarely grown in such a pure environment. I shared with you that the bioalgae concentrate were protected from all airborne pollutants mm-hmm. in all uh, lake or lagoon or any kind of uh, water pollutant, which is... No way days uh, polluted by over uh, potentially 300,000 types of chemical that we haven't even identified yet. And I'll read you a quote because I want to make that clear. But uh, the point is that compared to a, a plain spirulina or a plain dunaliella, the bioalgae concentrate due to the, their mix, the blend, it's four algae blended together, mm-hmm. the way that they're grown, the way that they're concentrated, is a different league. We're talking about food combination on a microscopic level. And it's not just an art anymore. There's a science to what the the Russians did. Yet, it remains a natural food, if you wish, other than the fact that it is well-grown by, nurtured by scientists, Mm -hmm. by the science, the technology that was discovered, invented. It's not rocket science. You're talking about a bioreactor, but the proper source of nutrients from the proper clean, pure water, and subsequently the proper control of the turbulence, the temperature, and uh, the light, like a good gardener. Uh It remains a truly organic, beyond organic food. It's a blessing that it's available. So we are talking about energy, and, and when we can influence the hypothalamus, the conductor with more energy of that nature, There's an awakening that takes place, and when the conductor wakes up, the violinist will have to play in tune. They have no choice. The pancreas, the liver, the kidney, the glands have no choice but to obey these uh, hormone, hormone, peptides, steroids, and uh, central nervous system message from the conductor. Hmm. And And so that biofeedback is increased. So there's a higher performance of the glands, the digestive uh, organs such as pancreas, pancreatic enzymes, the, even your saliva, the dog will salivate much more, much more better. Uh, digestion is better. Energy for elimination and exiting the debris out of the cell, out of the mitochondria as a function of energy. Uh, we have anemia. We have lame, sluggish uh, bodies or cells. And so we eat, we eat, we eat, and by the time we eat the next meal, we still have debris from a week ago in our body. Mm-hmm. So the name of the game is a, a clean house. What comes in must go out. You need water, you need oxygen, you need exercise, you need plant diet, ideally. You need uh, lots of fruits and fresh and organic. And if you add the bio superfood, you're going to be running marathon. <laughs> What's the, uh, the role of bacteria with the algae here? Well, uh, interesting, uh, for example, spirulina, blue-green algae, they really come from uh, the, the original strain, which, was called, which is called cyanobacteria. Uh, 3.7 billion years ago, that was the first ever known uh, living uh, cell on Earth. It, it invented eventually... Uh, grouping, such as a spiral, multiple cells grouped together to travel. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it invented cellular communication because when uh, it it wanted to speak with the next cell, it started liberating certain message. It invented uh, our pH, the alkalinity. It invented the first amoeba and blah, blah, blah. So that, this cyanobacteria has the only known species that has never been extinct. Really? Wow. Through all of the extension. And it will be there if, we, if, we, if we're in trouble. It will be there. It will stay. So it's really our, our, what we're made of. Uh, cells are really descend, direct descendant of this cyanobacteria. 
Mm-hmm. And and eating is really a communion, right? We're, it's not. It's a partnership with our Mother Earth mm-hmm. and the Sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so bacteria, cyanobacteria is scary. So the scientists will call it spirulina or dunaliella. <laughs> but certain algae are like chlorella is not considered a bacteria. It's considered a real algae. Uh-huh. Well, but you know, it's all uh, really such a complexity. There's two, three, four hundred thousand variants of algae. And then there's macroalgae and then there's microscopic algae. We're talking about microscopic algae. Let me tell you what it's made of so nobody's scared here. Right. Uh, spirulina cell or Dunaliella cell or hematococcus cell. Uh, and let's talk about spirulina because it's, it's one of the best. It's, got a, uh, it's a cell uh, that's got a membrane made of lipid. It's kind of a bit of a fat. Mm-hmm. Which is consumable and very healthy for human. It's kind of, it's a polysaccharide. In directly inside of that very, very, very thin membrane, which is very difficult, to, easy to break down on like, a, let's say, cellulose cell wall of chlorella. So what you have directly inside is a little bit of water, of course, uh, but immediately you have trace elements, minerals, you have fatty acids. Those are all molecular chain, right? You understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. You have... Uh, uh, fatty acid slash protein you have various carotenoid and all of their different shape you all the various vitamin 15,000 different potential components in there that's the latest awareness of how many sub nutrients phytonutrients are contained in a one microscopic uh, particle which is we call spirulina there is n- there is room for for inefficiency, like if, it, if it's not grown properly, it will have too much water. It will not develop as much fatty acid or as much carotenoid. If it's grown in a lazy lagoon or burnt by the sun, it will suffer from pollution. And it may even, uh, debris may even latch on to a batch of spirulina, such as, let's say, on Lake Clemente, you have, you know, the collector, how they collect the algae there on the lake. It's with a diesel engine. Hmm. Right? You've seen that. It, mm-hmm. it just spews the, the smoke behind and it collects algae. And so these algae are a pollution quencher. They will take care of that smoke. But you, you're going to consume a little bit of that. Hmm. So, uh, but a pure bioalgae concentrate, uh, the scientist, Dr. Kiriak, and his team have learned to avoid presence of any toxins, pollutants, heavy metal of any sort. The bioalgae concentrate as we have them today on the market are certified by Health Canada, which is a very, very strict certification, subject similar to ph- uh, pharmaceutical. The facility has to be inspected. Every lot has to be inspected for nutrient content, for pollution, for all known current infection that could be in it. And subsequently, that is... As before it enters the facility for um, encapsulating and bottling, and before it exists, before it's released to market, it has to be inspected, final inspection. And then I bring, him, bring them into the United States, and one out of 10 batch or 10 transport it goes to an FDA slash, uh, yeah, an FDA inspection, and sometimes they do an analysis, independent analysis too. So this product is safe. You know, I've described a lot about the environment, how it's grown and why, mm-hmm. and the fact that it's subject to these inspection. So you can be confident in the bioalgae concentrate. So what is the difference between the, I know you have a bunch of different products, but uh, the F1, the F2, and F3? Yeah, we have three formula, three different grade, if you wish, a strength and efficiency. And the reason for that is that not everybody needs the formula three, which is has more carotenoid and more concentration, because uh, what was discovered after working with the animal after Chernobyl, uh, let me open a parenthesis here. Uh-huh. Dr. Kiriak was invited unofficially, because it was a panic reaction, to work with some of the people that were scheduled to die after the accident of Chernobyl. So in the year following Chernobyl, there were many victims that were suffering from advanced radiation exposure, radiation ills, and uh, particularly leukemia and anemia. And he was able to work with uh, 100 or so people, mostly children, 
and, and and feed them at the time the the space. It was not yet in a freeze dried format. It was by the spoonful mm -hmm. these algae, and it was not as advanced as it is afterwards. And what they discovered was that the animals reacted much more positively to the feed, and so they realized that humans were more screwed up. Excuse the expression. Mm -hmm. And so they they increased. That's when they started to increase to the Formula Three. Animals were were fed the Formula One which was the, the most gentle formula. So they went to Formula 2, and then Formula 3 was the most uh, efficient at rendering this energy. So the difference between the three is simply a matter of, uh, of uh, intensity. It's not strength or power. It's efficiency slash intensity, which we don't all need. And because when you start with the F3, and if you have uh, some uh, endocrine issues such as a thyroid issue, or a poor liver function, or a poor kidney function, then that quick energy awakening the hypothalamus can lead to quick detoxification and healing crises, and people have diarrhea or, or flare-up of, of, of their on their skin. And they don't, and they have palpitation, and they feel too energetic, and, and they, they're afraid. They think it's it's a terrible thing. It's a healing, but it's too intense. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in some people uh, with high blood pressure or advanced uh, Alzheimer, you have to start gently, or with pregnancy, for example, we suggest a Formula One or Formula Two, okay. or with advanced age. We have clients that are 84 years old. They don't need the big gun. They they lived healthier than all of us. Because they had fundamental diet when they were younger. Uh -huh. It's interesting how the older folks, they respond with less capsule and more quickly and more gently. Uh, <clears throat> and they some often don't need the Formula 3. Uh, those that need the Formula 3 are these, the, the, new, the new baby boomers that are stuck with endocrine issue, menopausal issue, depression. Uh, fibro, you know, all kinds of, you can have thousands of conditions described. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the resistant uh, um, to Formula One, uh, you know, the, the Formula Three is more efficient there. So it's the same for microalgae blended, except that from one to two to three, there's more of the red algae components included. And then as well as the concentration, the exposure of the red algae to light is intensified. So you have more intensity of the energy transfer. So a lot of our listeners like to do, you know, workouts and you know, fitness type stuff. Would they like to do? Which formula would they do for athletes? I work mostly with Formula Three with extreme athletes. Why? Because prevention of inflammation for runner, long distance runner, or cyclist, mm -hmm. or uh, weightlifter will have a prevention of lactic acid. Uh, you know, increase of lactic acid threshold by 50%. We have athletes that in the early stage of starting to consume the product that can lift. I mean, they're so surprised they'll lift 20%, 30% more. Wow. That's a big deal. I That's mean, within days. Uh, so there's all kinds of uh, – where. Prevention of inflammation and thus allowing healing. For example, as a runner, I'm 65 years old. I've been running since I started the product because mm -hmm. I couldn't run before. Mark oh, wow. my words. I, I could tell you my little story, but I'll spare you. <laughs> um, what I have not had one injury in uh, its 14 years of running. Wow. When I lined up to marathon runs or half marathon or 10K or 5K. There's, you know, 8,000 people or 50,000 people at the boulder, boulder. Mm -hmm. All I see is bandages. Young kids with all kinds of wrap-up. And all they talk about is they were off running for three months uh, due to this and this uh, injury. And... Why do we get injured when we abuse running for hours, for example, day after day? Is what happens is you have an injury and the body develop uh, an inflammation around it, which is to prevent pain and, and infection if there is some tear in there. And uh, normally, it should abate. Like when you're a child, inflammation reduces very quickly, and you have healing that you know blood flow, mineral metabolism. And then uh, circulation and healing takes place and, and scarring and so forth. As we age, that, uh, that metabolism slows down or as we abuse ourselves or as we have uh, less and less of a good diet. Uh, 
And when, of course, when you run a marathon, this is abnormal. So mm -hmm. uh, inflammation s stays stuck uh, after the run, during the run, so you don't have a prevention and a healing as fast. When I run, I take a capsule every 20 minutes. I take a little bit of water, and I, I run four hours, five hours, and I finish the race. I'm social. I have no need of a massage. I would enjoy it, of course. The next morning, I'm running. I'm not like, oh, my God, staying in a motel, you know? Wow. Um, I can't walk. No. It's amazing recovery during the effort and wow. post, of course. And, and the next morning, like I said, soreness and all those things are a lot, lot, lot less. Yes. And I mean, this is just one facet of the benefit of this product. What let me really wrap it up with the reason that I take product that I started taking it that I fell in love with it was because of the, the new energy, uh -huh. the new brain focus clarity. It took me out of a little bit of a bipolar tendency that I had that I dealt with with uh, yoga or qigong. You know, every day I had to fight my to be on top of my little depression. Mm -hmm. This product just boom solved. I still do Qigong and yoga, but for different reasons. I don't do it to fight depression, even though it's wonderful. I get high, right? Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> uh, as well as uh, within six months, I lost about 25, 30 pounds. I was about 45 pounds. It didn't show that much, you know, but overweight, which I was always struggling to, to try to lose at 49 years old or so. Mm -hmm. Uh, some energy issues around that. And I had a chronic back problem and a tendonitis on the right knee that had been plaguing me for 20, 30 years. Wow. Uh, my back problem as a result of a series of severe subluxation, but no, no real structural damage, but uh, it wasn't healing. That went by the side, and I started brisk walking, I started running, and I did my first half marathon, and I can sit now 24 hours if I want. I, I don't even know that I have a back. Wow. It's cleared. And um, uh, I w where I was leading was that uh, there are many, many other benefits that besides uh, athletic benefit. Uh, so oh, let me get back to it. But the reason that I really am passionate about taking it is that in research, it prevented osteoporosis, cardiovascular plaque, cholesterol, prevented 100%. It prevented uh, dementia or these kinds of behavior and, and uh, aggressivity, aggression in animals. Mm -hmm. You know, the mental irritability, the, uh, which is caused by, often by acidity. Acidity equals pain, equals irritation, equals depression, equals anxiety. All of these emotional issues are often because of a, a physical unwellness in the brain. The hormones are not circulating. The speed of the brain uh, communication uh, for a, a teenager, a child, is about five, uh, 200 milliseconds, I think it is, or is it 100, to cross the brain between synapses and so forth. So for the brain to go get a memory, zap, zap it's very fast when we're young. And as we become 40 years old, it's down to 300. And then as we become older with Alzheimer or dementia, we're looking at 500. So by the time you say, fetch me this memory, uh, by the time it goes there and comes back, you, you forgot what you asked for, right? right. And that causes ir irritation, anxiety. You know, imagine the confusion. And, and interesting enough, that starts in midlife. Alzheimer doesn't land overnight. You don't catch Alzheimer, right? right. It's a gradual process of decay of uh, certain circulation, certain uh, metabolism, particularly an accumulation of dying parts on a microscopic level in the brain, just like we have arterial plaque in our body. We have fat around our arteries, around our, uh, around our organs. The same phenomena happens in the brain. And it's a lot more difficult to feed and cleanse the brain once it's engaged. So the biosuperfood, as soon as you begin to consume it, or the bioalgae, 
and we have had hundreds of case and uh, thousands of testimonials as to how people start to feel better. They call it clarity, focus, uh, memory. They can remember phone number, stuff like that. But uh, also we have worked with many people suffering from depression that have been able to stop medicating uh, wisely, you know, weaning off. People with vasculitis of the brain, severe vasculitis, uh, 32 different nodules, within six weeks, able to, uh, unsocial, not able to function, in, in constant pain, able to return to social life and enjoy life. To this day, uh, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about uh, one particular lady in the West Northwest mm-hmm. who loves to share her story. And she was a, a nurse working with a brain surgeon, by the way, who, who oversaw the whole uh, story with her a physician, an MD, and was amazed at the fact that she came out of it from 25 years of pain and, uh, and so forth. So, uh, and there, so prevention of uh, Alzheimer, for example, is what, why I take it. Prevention of um, loss of metabolism of my pH, of blood sugar, of formation of plaque, mm-hmm. uh, prevention of the growth of a new tumor, which is so easy. You know, a tumor starts, uh, it's a microscopic thing. It's smaller than the prick of a needle, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, the body can quench these little pockets. We, ever, all of us have them constantly, every day. We have birth of new, new uh, free radical pockets, and uh, our body deals with it. Or they're so small that they'll stay with us for life. They'll never manifest, never be diagnosed. Right. When you dissect uh, most American, you would find that there are many, many, many tumors. They were never mal- di- diagnosed or, or mal- 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 uh, whatever, cancerous mm-hmm. or declared cancerous. So uh, cancer comes uh, from a constant abuse or stress, the death of a loved one, a shock or lack of rest, and eventually it grows to the size of a pea, and you don't know it. Now, it's a, big, it's a bigger job to clear that for the body. So I take it because I don't want to see uh, the prick of a needle <laughs> right, right. tumor in my body. Right. I want to cleanse every day before it's too late, before it's advanced. Now... Certainly, prevention is the most, the best place to be with health, but I assure you, folks, uh, in research, the research dealt with advanced cancer in large population of animals, such as pigs, mm-hmm. with epidemic of cancer. The chicken farm was uh, plagued with cancers. The uh, 15,000 dairy cow, dairy farm, cow f- was plagued with some cancer, and that's why they were chosen for the research. And these cancers, they were engaged were cleared within the first year oh my gosh. or several wow. months of starting the new diet. In the, the chicken, what was remarkable is that 50% of the healed animal, and they healed themselves, we're not talking about a cure or medicine, mm-hmm. were able to return to production of laying eggs. I mean, amazing in this industry. Yeah, oh 50%. My gosh. Yeah. And uh, the others survived, but they were not as uh, productive as they used to be coming out of a cancer. Anyway, and, and these were measured, uh, you know, in economics f- uh, factors. The, these research were done purely for economy. I mean, saving the, the, the food chain of the country, but also uh, they were selling eggs and egg powder and, and, and all over uh, Europe. Russia was in their friendly countries, uh, Holland and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so it was about making money and success as well as uh, preventing the loss of productivity of the nation. And so they didn't care so much about health per se. It was a business. But Dr. Kiriak himself was dedicated to human health. He had lost himself five, at that time, early on, five members of his immediate family, mm. his father, his grandfather, a brother, a sister, and eventually a young son to pancreatic cancer, which mm. was common in that region, but also genetically prevalent in his family. Mm. Uh, That was his great motivation, and he was happy to go in research. He would have preferred to go into human research and all that. Mm -hmm. 
And Chernobyl was a lovely experience for him. He would share that with all of us. And after uh, 1990, when the Russian uh, uh, Soviet Union broke down, uh, he, he continued. He stayed in Russia for another six years. He started his own private uh, manufacturing of the product and distribution locally, you know, small. He started very small. Mm -hmm. And then um, he was invited by a Canadian diplomat during a symposium in uh, Brussels to come live in Canada. And they facilitated his venue because he was a, a scientist and so forth. And uh, he came to the promised land and then, uh, in 96 and then discovered that there was just plague with disease <laughs> and uh, that it was like, you know, he was coming out of the communist concept. It was quite a re-education for him. And to this day, um, it's an interesting adventure for Dr. Kiriak. Wow. But um, that's how the product came to be on, uh, manufactured and continued by Dr. Kiriak in Canada currently. But wow. the facility for growing and nurturing the algae is still in that last research facility that became a private enterprise. It's actually a very small affair over there in a very remote part of, of uh, Kamchatka. And he really pays the bill. He pays a family there to one of his former students to, uh, to um, be ready for batches that he orders to grow. It, uh, it's not huge. You know, this is not, we're not big companies. We're family enterprise. I want to make that clear. When people call us, we have a few employees. We answer the phone. We answer emails. But uh, uh, we do a great job. <laughs> we just uh, mm. we just had a survey done with. We had 874 people respond to our survey. This is uh, from over 12,000 subscriber to my new newsletter, mm. and we had a 90% satisfaction about the product. Wow! Wow! Uh, of the uh, of the expected result. And we had a wonderful uh, um, congratulation on our service. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so there was a lot, a lot of information in the survey, and that, that's available, by the way. So, folks, uh, if you write at info at bioage dot com, if you call us at eight seven seven two eight eight nine one one six, we'll help you to find this information to read the book for free or you can uh, buy the product we have a discount a special discount for uh, your listener and the uh, coupon code is justin oh, j-u-s-t-i-n ah. and when you call us uh, mention that as well Great. and we we'll, would love for you to try it and give it a try and um, maybe help uh, maybe it will change your life like it did mine yeah i love it i love it that's wow. so great wow so My much head is spinning <laughs> research and information about this stuff is so good wow well thank you for i wanted being to on. i wanted to finish with one thing i know i know i, I know i'm taking the time but yeah. there's a lot of fear about fukushima Yes. Uh, yes. And recently, Mike Adam, uh, whom I love very much, but you know, he's a mar very extraordinary marketer. Mm -hmm. He says that you should buy a Celsium Eliminator. It's a supplement that uh, he or some of his people sell. Mm -hmm. Celsium or oh, Cesium Eliminator. That's right. Which yeah. is in case of a collapse. I mean, it's not happening right now. You don't need. He says, stock it up, stock it, like they used to sell iodine, right? <laughs> A billion, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of iodine, useless iodine. <laughs> I want to read you a paragraph. I want to read that for you, but for your folks. That is so important to understand about uh, extreme health. And I like your, your extreme health. Mm. Listen, cesium is one particular uh, nasty uh, metal or molecule. And if you have a lot, it's a tr it's trouble. Not so with arsenic, and so with you know a myriad of other poison. But let me read this, and then I'll tell you what I suggest to do instead of taking a supplement for every one of those things. Great. Because you'd end up with millions of supplements. <laughs> Here it is. The U.S. Chemical Abstract Service. This is a formal government agency. Maintains a registry of over 12 million organic and inorganic chemicals. 12 millions, right? Wow. 14 million of which are commercial, uh, 20, 32 millions, I'm sorry, and 14 millions of which are commercially available. Nearly 100,000 of these are registered in the United States and the European Union and are traded internationally. 
right? A hundred thousand inorganic or organic chemicals. Pesticides manufacture alone, which constitute merely 5% of the synthetic chemical industry, markets nearly 20,000 different compounds. The amount of chemical released in the United States are also astonishing. In the year 2000, 300 chemicals were produced in amounts exceeding 1 billion pounds annually, and about 2,700 others exceeded 1 million pounds each per year. Then he goes on to say, and this is John Wargo, who is a Yale Department of Environmental Study PhD. This is the man. The mixing of these chemicals, he says, but the story doesn't end there. The mixing of these chemicals to form millions of different consumer products and their consequent entry into the waste stream have produced chemical exposure that far exceed our understanding as well as the ability of government to assure safety, right? It's uncontrollable. So it's the mixing, yeah. So what we have is we have the popular verification of, um, of chlorine and uh, pesticides and DDT, you know, and we have all these little stories going on. But the reality is, folks, is that we, have, we are surviving <laughs> this onslaught of poison. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> the human ability of standing on our feet amidst this pollution is what we need to talk about. Mm. It is what we need to support and encourage. And so, if you take cesium eliminator, are you going to have to take uh, 30, 32 million different supplements? Because you have 32 million different inorganic chemicals in America. So, I'm trying to make a point that rather than... F- defending yourself against every attack, like the Dr. Oz model, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You, have, you have to wear gloves, you have to cover the toilet bowl, you have to wash your hands uh, 5,500 times per day, you can't touch anybody, mm-hmm. you have to do a owie. I mean, it's endless fear. Right. I say, uh, eat marvelous high-energy food, which are mostly the plant food, green plants and colorful food. Mm-hmm. Get as organic, as close to the land as possible. Uh, Certainly, water is the beverage of choice. Lots of water. You have to drain, drain, drain. You have to provide water. Don't forget to breed, Mm. folks. People don't breed. Breed, uh, Breath, you can live a month. Without the breath, you die in a minute or two. Mm. Mm. So, the breath is the first energy vehicle. So, don't go crazy over supplement X, (laughs) breed instead. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, exercise, you have to stay in a high-frequency zone, so you have to increase oxygenation potential, you have to increase temperature in your body to help your body kill the the, the nasty stuff and increase circulation and elimination. And I say... uh, in, you know, I don't take any supplements whatsoever. I, I consume the bio superfood because I know the history of it, but it's part of my diet. It's a food. It's a I consume food. Uh, about 12 capsules per day, which is 3 grams of food. Uh, this is barely in the palm of my hand. It, though it, it occurs in capsule, people think of it as medicine. It's not medicine. It's just food served in, in practical way of distributed. Because you want to... You don't want to eat them all in the morning and then leave your brain sluggish for the rest of the day, right? You, so you want to distribute the, the wonderful brain, brain meal, if you wish, several times per day. And you get higher performance of your brain, which increases performance of your organs, of your energy, of the coherence of your energy, energy transfer, remember? And the value added of consuming the bio superfood is that as soon as you begin to include it in your diet, your ability to, to extract and break down and filter and absorb and assimilate nutrients from your regular diet jump hundreds of times, hundredfold in certain types of nutrients. Typically, calcium, as we age, calcium is the most difficult nutrient because it's the heaviest nutrient on the atomic scale. Mm-hmm. And it's a big one to break out of our, our food. So most people, particularly women, end up with osteoporosis and they waste the calcium flows right through their stool, right through the through the it passes them if you're lucky and, and most and often the calcium stays stuck 
and becomes part of the plaque. And most of plaque is, is not cholesterol. It's calcium, for example, mm. and other debris. So when you consume bi- the bioalgae uh, concentrate, your ability to assimilate and break down the calcium from your diet jumps from, and Dr. Kiriak gave us a, a model. He says it jumps from uh, like 15% in normal to 90%. And to 90%. So whatever calcium is in the spinach, you're going to get 90% of potential of it instead of 15%. But the wow. best thing, he says, is that that 10% that you're not assimilating, your body will have sufficient energy to get rid of it also. Because if you were to assimilate, let's say, 80% or 70%, and you have 30% stuck in your body, free-floating free calcium, mm-hmm. it's not good either. So it, And this is all because of energy. Because to break down calcium out of spinach, and, and that's very high level above uh, in the stomach and all that, is when it comes to the duodenum, the first part of your intestine, there's enzymes working there to break down. So the fabrication of these digestive enzymes starts in the mouth with uh, amylase, for example, but when you get to the pancreas, you have enzymes specific to break down uh, minerals, trace elements, uh, and protease for protein and so forth. And to fabricate these enzymes requires energy at the pancreas. Mm -hmm. And it also requires for the hypothalamus, for the conductor above, to be aware that food's coming in and to send a very strong message to the pancreas. Like uh, the dog drools because the brain says, uh, we're going to get some food soon, so start drooling. It's not the mouth. The mouth's not intelligent. Right. The pancreas is not intelligent. It's a, it's a very complex organ. It has multiple functions, but it only operates based on orders from different hormones. Just like, let me finish with explaining vitamin D. People think that vitamin D is a vitamin. Right? Ultimately, vitamin D is finished product at the kidney. So specialized cells of the kidney, upon receiving a message from the brain constantly throughout the day, they secrete from, uh, it's a partnership with the liver which stocks the precursor vitamin D, which is fabricated at the skin and released in the blood. It's stored in the liver. So the kidney cells supercharge it into what is called vitamin D, but in reality, it's an enzyme slash hormone. Mm-hmm. And that's a constant 24-7 process that the brain says, I need it now because I need to do this or that activity. Uh, you cannot replace that by taking a handful of vitamin D in the morning. You're fooling yourself. You, you would be much better off restoring your kidney function. Your, your liver function, your skin function, and the brain overseeing these functions. And it's all about energy. So as we become sluggish, as we age, our hypothalamus slows down and starts to tolerate inefficiency in the body. Mm -hmm. And only worries about life-critical events. Mm -hmm. So it'll store, let's say it'll put dust under the carpet. Right, uh, accumulation of a tumor somewhere. Your pH will shift. Your blood sugar will start to vary. This or that hormone will fluctuate. But let me tell you why I say that. But the blood pH will never change. Why? Because it, you die, right? Mm-hmm. So the brain is smart enough to say, okay, let me take care of the blood pH of the heart. We've got to pump the heart. Minimum life function has to be maintained and let the poor guy get fat. Suffer from fatigue, and, you know, or, or accumulate some plaque everywhere. But as long as we keep the pH in the blood okay and the heart pumping, my job is done. That's called a lazy, lazy conductor, lazy hypothalamus. And you're much better off waking up the conductor, the hypothalamus, through refined food, through the bioalgae concentrate, than to struggle with each organ and each gland one at a time in your body. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot huh? of sense. Awaken the genius within. I and like that. That's what Dr. Kiriak told me the first time I met him, and I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's really great. It's like you know, I thought he was talking nutrition. about me, and you know, my ego was... <laughs> 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 that is a great name for a book, I have to say. Wow. So thank you, uh, Dr. Thomas, for being on the show. And so people want to get the product. You said there is a uh, discount code they can use, and you said it's Justin. Is that correct? Cor- correct. Yeah, your name. 
And uh, <clears throat> either you call, you have to tell us, but uh, to get that coupon, and or we can place the order for you. Or if you go online, then uh, there's a coupon um, section in the view cart. When you're in the cart, that you can enter the word Justin in the coupon box, and then uh, update your cart, and you'll get a 10% discount right oh, away. Oh, excellent. that is so gracious. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Thomas, for being Ooh. on. Stay on the line there for just a second. We're going to sign off our live show here really quickly. I just want to say thank you to everyone who was in the live show today. We really, really appreciate that. We broadcast four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. And if you're interested in this product or any of the products information that he talked about, you can use the coupon code Justin, which is really nice of him to do that. I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for being in the chat room. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Kate and Justin. Thank you. Have a great trip to Chicago. Yeah, enjoy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Roland. Bye. Bye-bye. Very interesting stuff. Kate and I are going to be right back right after this break. If you have any digestive problems whatsoever, I highly recommend getting a Squatty Potty that sits right underneath your toilet. Squatty Potties help give relief from constipation and bloating, hemorrhoids and straining, IBS, pelvic floor and bladder issues. See, as humans, we are designed to squat when we eliminate and when we sit on a toilet, that angle kinks and pinches off the puborectalis muscle in your colon. And the Squatty Potty opens the colon to eliminate more quickly and completely. Listen to what Daniel Vitalis has to say about that. One of the reasons I love to promote the idea of the squat toilet is because for a couple of reasons. One, there's a ligament that wraps around your colon that prevents you when you're in the seated position from being able to have an effective bowel movement. But that ligament's loosed when we're in a full squat. So people are fighting their own body to defecate this way. Now, in the rest of the world, people defecate in the squat. Use a squat toilet. I'm so big on this. I've got a video on my website about that, but I really believe that it's important we start to actually defecate in an anatomically correct position. So, you know, nobody sits on chairs to defecate except people in the West. And we have more rectal and bowel problems than anybody, more constipation than anybody. But this actually puts our body in a disadvantageous position for trying to go to the bathroom. So if you don't have a squat toilet or don't want to invest in one, I don't know, stack some books up. But get something where you can actually squat up above the toilet or at least get your, your knees up higher. Justin and I love our squatty potty. Start improving your digestion and elimination today by going to extremehealthradio.com slash squat or see it in our store. Again, go to extremehealthradio.com slash squat and watch the video to learn more. I have to say, I have been absolutely loving this product by... Tristan Truscott and Peter Ragnar called Good Morning, Good Evening, Qigong. If you want to listen to the interview we did with Tristan, you can go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash 127. And Qigong is a great way to de-stress the body. And as you know, there's a huge component to disease caused by stress. And stress is a huge factor in how we live our lives and the amount of energy we have and the amount of vitality we have. And so, Dr. Shade, what do you think about Qigong? People come to me and they're really sick and they got this blown out neurological system and all this toxicity. And I tell them, you need to do Qigong, Tai Chi. You need to do these things that settle down and restore your neurology because it puts together all the parts. It puts you back into that state where you can start to detoxify. Mm. And so I highly, highly recommend all that. And what about you, Kit Campbell? What do you think about Qigong? Do you like it as well? Qigong is amazing. And the reason that I believe it to be amazing is everything here is energy. That is a scientific fact, if there ever is one. So mm. when you're practicing Qigong, you're actually drawing energy into your body. Your intention, whatever your intention is behind any action, will determine the level of energy, type of energy that you absorb into your body. So your intention behind <laughs> your is very important, just like thought. So when you're practicing Qigong, you're actually bringing energy in and you're bringing out the stuff that might be a bit stale. With Tai Chi, it's totally different. The energy runs underneath the skin because it's a, it's more of a, a martial, this is the Chinese understanding, by the way. It's more of a martial art. So Qigong is very, very good for bringing that energy into the body and just fantastic. If you're interested in picking up this Qigong course by Tristan Truscott and Peter Ragnar, go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash Qigong. That's Q-I-G-O-N-G. And you can learn more about it. There's a great video on that page and you can learn more about it on that page. 
And I highly, highly recommend this product. I love it myself. So go ahead and check that out. ExtremeHealthRadio.com forward slash Qigong. Listener supported. Extreme Health Radio. Opening minds and transforming lives worldwide. worldwide. Don't forget to join our thriving community for health tips, inspiration, and show updates at extremehealthradio.com slash Facebook. Well, another show in the can. Kate, what do you think about that? As you would say, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. (laughs) You say that or the can reference all the time. (laughs) As if I have all this experience in radio. Right, right. Some kind of (laughs) DJ or something. (laughs) DJ Enzyme, because you're always breaking it down. (laughs) That's hilarious. DJ Enzyme, where'd that come from? The chat room. Oh, was that it? Amber Marie. DJ Enzyme. DJ, you should go by DJ Enzyme because you're always breaking it down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's hilarious. I forgot about that. I, oh, that's great. That was good stuff. That's great. Wow. So what do you think about that show with uh, Dr. Ooh. Thomas? Fascinating stuff. Talked In, about a lot of groundwork there. Huh? Yeah. Laid a lot of groundwork. Super informative. I know I'm going to have a bunch of questions more. You know, it's like, like he said at the end there, uh, you might have to listen to it two or three times to even grasp the concept of what's, what's going, going on. on with these products. Yeah. And, yeah, fascinating Phew. stuff. I mean, it's it's interesting because there's so much that goes into these products and the history of them and the the cleanliness of the bioreactors that they create yeah. the algaes in. Yeah. We didn't even talk about that. Yeah. Um, but also the water that they're used with and why they created them and the need for them. Because, uh, you know, he talked about Chernobyl and mm. all the cancer in this guy's family. And so um, there's a lot of groundwork that has to be laid for understanding um, what these things do. And I think it's something, I think it's really interesting because a lot of times there are a lot of people in the world that will just take something. I know people like this. Do you? Where if you just tell them to take something, they'll do they'll it. They'll do it, yeah, absolutely. They don't know why. Yeah. Right? They don't understand the, um, the science behind it and yeah. how it actually benefits them. It's funny because with our supplement thing, we have a lot of different supplements we take. And I, I look at each bottle and I know exactly why I'm taking each one. Me too. But that took a while. I, at the beginning, I remember you would tell me, hey, this is good for this, take yeah. that. And I would just take it like most people do because yeah. I trusted you. Mm-hmm. But I've been doing my own sort of research. research into the products. And it's very important to know where they come from and why we take them and what they do for people. Isn't and, it? Gosh, that, isn't that fascinating how he just talked about the studies with those sheep and the, and the chickens? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, right? Good night. Yeah, fascinating. Just wild. I mean, <sighs> all the increased egg production and... and the and, milk. And, 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 and the... The way the osteoporosis went away. I mean, just really interesting mm. stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's really important to to know what you eat, why you're eating it, when you're eating it, and how it's affecting your body. I think that's a lost art. That's that's it's an art that's lost in our culture. Absolutely. Being with your food, being with your supplements, and and sitting with them and figuring and trying to see how it's affecting your body. I think it's yeah. Um, you know, I think it's really important. I found it to be, I'm not suggesting this, and I, I doubt he would either, but a very interesting experiment, like how he's a marathon runner, and he goes in every, what, he said every four hours or something? He'll, yeah, he'll or maybe take, more often than every 20 minutes, I think he that's said. That's right, he'll take he would one take pill. A, uh, one pill with some water and just keep going at the end. He, he said he was social, <laughs> he wasn't feeling any you know fatigue, he was able to just sleep really well, he wasn't wired. I mean, half those people with marath- doing marathons and extreme sports like that and extreme training oh, are just... Up thrashed and then they you know have to yeah. wait a couple of days and then get up and do it all over again and just they put their body through so much and he was just saying how how do we find a way especially with this product to work with the body to facilitate right. it to be able to perform at that level and yeah it sounds like he just rushes right through at you know he's not old by any means but at his age he's just thriving and to be able to do that on your joints like that is uh, pretty impressive i think and he only started running at 50 is that what he said? Yeah. Like that. wow. That's what most people are. I mean, unfortunately, most people are probably breaking down and feeling their, the signs of age at that point, you know, yeah. mid age, you know, <laughs> you know, I thought it was interesting too. The fact that he talked about for athletes, the, it, it reduces the production of lactic acid. Cause mm. if you're able to decrease the production of lactic acid, that's, that's one of the things that our sauna does. And the, and the rebounder does is it cleanses the, the lymphatic system 
But if you're able to decrease the amount of lactic acid, you can increase the healing time because that time when you work out, like if you're doing, if you're, if you're going to the gym and you want to get really strong, mm -hmm. you want to lift as many times as you can in mm -hmm. a week. You know, you might want to do, if you're going to work out your chest, say, you want to work out your chest four times a week. Repetition's the name of the game then to, yeah. keep, to get it. Yeah. Right. But you can't do cycle. that. The average person can't do that because if they lift heavy on Monday, uh -huh. they can't lift heavy again until probably Thursday. Right. They're thrashed. They're recovering. They're, they're recovering. Their right. muscles broke down and they're sore because of the lactic acid. So right. if you're able to get rid of the lactic acid, it'll boost recovery time. And then you can, instead of working out Thursday, you can work out Wednesday and then work out again on Saturday. So you can get three good workouts and as a place to as opposed to two, which that's the difference between someone really excelling in sports and someone who, who doesn't. Sure. Yeah. That's the difference of putting on a lot of muscle or whatever, burning fat. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> Whew. And that uh the lactic acid too is interesting too because that's a uh, I think it fuels cancer. Uh I think it does a buildup of too much of that, right? Too much acid in the body. Yeah, mm. it uh it it fuels cancer from what I understand and What does lactic mean? Do you know? I don't know. No. I don't know. Lac. Oh, it sounds like lactose. It does, isn't it? Lactic. Hmm. Lactic acid. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. I know that um I've heard a lot of different people talk about the production of that is is um leads to cancer. So hmm. So if it doesn't have a way to exit out the body or because we all build it right when we move around and just by mm -hmm. being. Yeah. Yeah. We all build it. So if you have stress in your life, you, you know, eat bad food that all produces lactic acid on a smaller scale. Right. Um, you know, because your your muscles aren't sore from that. Uh -huh. But on a on an energetic level or on a biological level, you produce the same lactic acid. It's just that uh, if you're able to get rid of that through cleansing or whatever, um then that's going to lead to protection from cancer right, or other sense. diseases too. Um, <laughs> so the the fact that this does that, it's just really fascinating stuff. I mean, so the name of the game is uh, know why you take what you do and how to protect correctly yeah. your your vital organs and your vitality. Yeah. The, the, the last thing I'll say too that I thought was interesting about the show was that I like the way he talked about how food is not necessarily medicine, but it's energy. Oh, I loved that. What did he say? He kind of changed around Hippocrates' quote. What did he say? Yeah, when Hippocrates said, let thy medicine be thy food, he said, well, medicine shouldn't be, or food shouldn't be our medicine, food should be our energy. Our energy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. I mean, while he agreed with what <laughs> Hippocrates was saying at the time, he yeah. said nowadays, you know, things are different and yeah. yeah, we don't, we need to eat good diets and make sure that we're, you know, treating our bodies right, but the energy levels where it's at more than trying to just, you know, cause he, I think it, it seemed um, along his line of thinking that food wasn't going to cure you, but it right. can aid you and assist your body in uh, overcoming those challenges. And it gives you the energy to be able to go after. Yeah. Or maybe it gives your body the, the energy to be able to create more white blood cells, which then have the energy to go after the disease or, so it's like this kind mm. of process, but um, it makes a lot of sense because at, at the core level, we're all frequency, we're all energy, we're all vibrating. Mm -hmm. he, he got into subatomic physics a little bit, but that's that's basically what we all are. We're just vibrating yeah. forms of, of energy, energetic um, energy in the body. And so, didn't you find it interesting how he talked about how like your liver isn't really like an organ, or is it, it isn't like a liver? Yeah, we don't really have these d separate organs. Interesting, like huh? Yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it's yeah, it's interesting. I've heard I've heard other people talk about that. Where like if you if you were to get rid of a certain organ, all your other organs will pick up the slack. Isn't that in well? And that's why the unfortunate situations where people have had to have organs taken out or have mm -hmm. chosen to have you know your gallbladder taken out or yeah, uh, it taxes all the other or, it taxes. or it, how can it not I mean it has a function it's not there for fun. you don't have an extra part for fun you I, know. Know. <laughs> I know right yeah <laughs> just for spare part <laughs> <laughs> just to have it so the doctor like a can spare look tire, at it right. like oh wow amazing <laughs> yeah right look at that no but um and so what's wild about that, though, is that, you know, your lungs could pick up the slack of something that your intestines do. Right. Which is very strange because on a biological level, your lungs shouldn't be able to do anything other than... Perform a breathing function. Yeah, breathing function. Filtering. But, but yet the body works on a like a hologram, like I mentioned in the show. The same... It's it's like with a hologram, if you take something... It's, it's sort of like in a in the ocean. If you take a little vial of water, you're going to get the same minerals no matter where you take the vial of water and what ocean around the planet. Mm -hmm. It's all the same and it's all contained 
within each drop. Mm. And so it's it's just like that with our body, but we we think of these separate things, like your liver does this and your- Kidneys do that, your brain yeah. does that, right? I mean, maybe your brain digests food. <laughs> Who knows? Wow, that's a weird thought. I mean, it's it's- I mean, it, it could help in the process if you were to get rid of your colon or something, mm. you know? It's every organ will have to... Especially the power of your brain thinking about the food. You know, you have an energetic uh, transfer there that, yeah. you know, our thoughts are obviously so beyond powerful. We don't even know how it all works. And maybe just that alone, you are digesting your food through your yeah. brain. I don't know. My eye digests my food. <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? I just made it Oh, up. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that show. It was a long one, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're interested in getting any of that bio-age um, sp- uh, spirulina or um, microalgae that he talks about, uh, if you use the co- coupon code Justin, you'll get 10% off. So we appreciate that. And you can do that if you go to extremehealthradio.com slash bio-age, B-I-O-A-G-E. That's, well, you, that's where you will get the commission. So we appreciate that. And um yeah, this is episode 274, right? And Correct. So we broadcast live four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. And I think that's about it, right? Is that I, a wrap? I think that's a wrap. That is a wrap. All right, cool. <laughs> All Thanks, right. guys. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And we will catch you on the next episode. Hey, everybody. This is Josie, Justin's mom. Don't tell him, but I know he would absolutely be really happy if you would sign up to his free weekly newsletter. And don't forget to share this with all your friends. This is the buzzing bumblebee signing off. That was so good. Hello. Hello. listening to this episode it's time to go for now but our mission does not end with this show justin and kate will be back with another interview packed full of ideas discoveries and unique ways to regain your health head on over to extremehealthradio.com forward slash subscribe and instantly download our free gift too that contains cutting edge strategies to start making healthy lifestyle changes today No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. None of the information.